Perseverance rover is currently exploring inside the Jezero crater on Mars, which is approximately 363 million kilometers from Earth. Still, despite the vastness of the distance between us, Perseverance is giving us thousands of pictures, films, and scientific data collected by its many sensors and instruments. To put that in perspective, the Voyager spacecraft captured the iconic pale blue dot image from a distance of 6 billion kilometers from Earth. That's 40 times as far as Earth is from the Sun. Today, we send and receive data from spacecraft via radio waves. Yes, those are the same radio waves we use to tune in. Even with the amazing and costly technologies available today, data transfer speeds over interplanetary distances can be far slower than dial-up internet. This greatly restricts the amount of data a probe can gather and the rate at which it can be received, which is why NASA is planning to try something new in the near future. Welcome to Z. And come along with me today as we investigate the various forms of technology NASA has introduced in the realm of deep space communication and see how NASA maintains touch with spacecraft located billions of kilometers away. The NASA missions probes and rovers do not have exceptionally powerful radio antennas since they are not designed to handle such a large and robust component. They transmit data via tiny, highly directional antennas. This means that massive terrestrial radio antennas will have to do the bulk of the work. Spacecraft communications at NASA are handled via the Deep Space Network. When it comes to scientific communications, none are as large or as sensitive as the Deep Space Network. In 1969, the first TV images of Neil Armstrong stepping onto the moon were received by the DSN and transmitted around the world. After NASA was forced to abort a planned lunar landing due to the bursting of an oxygen tank during the tense Apollo 13 mission, it was called upon to provide support. Engineers on the ground needed to stay in touch with the astronauts in the capsule throughout the crucial re-entry. Few resources were available for communications because the spacecraft's power was needed for re-entry. The DSN recorded these whispers from space, which ultimately led to the safe return of the astronauts to Earth. The DSN naturally keeps in touch with every active NASA deep space project. It can even communicate with Mars rovers. Each antenna can simultaneously receive numerous signals, but can only broadcast a single outgoing signal. How does it function, then? The answer is a network of three locations in California, Spain, and Australia, each of which has many enormous radio telescopes. There are several antennas at each location. The size of the antennas is a consideration, but it's not the only one. Their location is also critically significant. Each facility is located in semi-mountainous, bowl-shaped terrain to help protect against radio frequency interference, and they are all evenly spaced and around 120 degrees apart in longitude. There aren't often communication lapses with active missions because the three sites are spread out enough that at any given instant in Earth's rotation, practically every portion of the sky is covered by an antenna. The DSN relays commands and updates to software on spacecraft, and it also aids in compiling the science data collected by the satellite. The DSN not only assists NASA in monitoring, controlling, and gathering data from all spacecraft beyond the moon, but also the European Space Agency, ESA, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, and the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO. There are, however, drawbacks to this approach as well. To keep in touch over such great distances, they need powerful transmitters and receivers, as well as massive antennas on Earth. Even though it has many useful features, the DSN is starting to show its age. For many years, it was the sole means of contact between NASA and the outside world. Problems arise when significant parts need to be replaced, which can take an antenna out of use for a considerable amount of time. In addition, the lifespan of the older 70M antennas is shortening. These will eventually need to be replaced. In addition, they are not particularly effective for interstellar travel. 
Data communication is excruciatingly sluggish over great distances, as I indicated. New Horizons spent nearly two years transmitting information from its single flyby of Pluto. What, therefore, can be improved upon? For this reason, NASA has planned a mission called the Laser Communications Relay Demonstration. NASA has employed radio frequency systems to talk to people and spacecraft ever since the beginning of space travel, but the LCRD will show what optical communications can do. This space relay, set to launch on December 7, 2021, is an improved, faster, and more technologically advanced method of transmitting data in space than previous methods, which relied on radio waves. More information can be sent at once because infrared light has greater frequencies than radio waves. From geosynchronous orbit, this satellite antenna can deliver data to Earth at a rate of 1.2 gigabits per second. It's almost as if NASA were switching from dial-up to fiber optic internet with this. Besides facilitating faster data transfers, the LCRD will aid NASA in doing away with the necessity of direct line of sight between a mission's antennae and Earth. And because it will be in a geostationary orbit, it will always have a clear view of Earth's ground stations. If a spacecraft is in a geostationary orbit, it is traveling around the planet at the same rate as Earth's rotation, thus it always sees the same side of the planet. Even though LCRD is just a tech demo, it's believed that it'll show how effective optical communications may be in orbit. It is expected that the bandwidth of the system will be 10 to 100 times greater than that of radio frequency systems. The equipment used for optical communication is also lighter and more compact than its radio counterpart. Therefore, a lighter and cheaper launch would be possible for an optically communicating spacecraft or more room for scientific instruments. In fact, the entire LCRD payload is little bigger than a king-size mattress in contrast to the 70-meter tall monstrosities used by the DSN for radio reception at the moment. Optical communication systems also have a low power consumption, which is a huge plus. However, optical communications have the fundamental drawback of not being able to easily pierce cloud coverage. Therefore, NASA still has to construct a system adaptable enough to minimize disruptions due to weather on Earth. This will be tested by LCRD sending data to two ground stations, one in California and one in Hawaii. These spots were picked because they typically have light cloud cover. The question now is, what purpose will the LCRD serve? The technical demonstration involves sending data from the International Space Station to Earth at speeds orders of magnitude faster than are now conceivable. Due to its low orbit, the ISS is only visible to ground stations for brief intervals. If, however, it is transmitting information to the LCRD, which is located far above the Earth, it will remain in view of the LCRD for the better part of its orbit and will be able to do so for significantly longer stretches of time. Assuming LCRD is successful, we will put this new optical capabilities to use in forthcoming missions. Ultra-high definition video captured by the Artemis II spacecraft during its lunar exploration will be transmitted to Earth through infrared light as part of the upcoming Orion mission, scheduled for flight in 2024. Moreover, the Psyche mission will depart for an asteroid more than 240 million kilometers from Earth in 2026. To investigate the feasibility of laser communications at this range, the deep space optical communication payload will be carried by Psyche. These flights are crucial to laying the groundwork for laser communication in outer space. The increased bandwidth will eliminate a significant barrier to collecting scientific data, which has previously slowed down missions. In all honesty, I can't wait for the day when we can send ultra-high-definition video signals from planets and asteroids. In addition, if we decide to go to uncharted regions of the solar system again, we won't have to wait as long for the data to return. Finally, we have an answer. Almost everything you could possibly want to know about interstellar transmission networks, including the possibility that future missions will make use of unprecedented bandwidth. 
Alright everyone, here is where the video ends. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more recent NASA updates.